three hundred and sixty five days, three hundred and sixty five messages God has in store for you in each day. Great is our God, written by Fernando Zavala. Come, join us. Let us see what God has in store for you today. Hello, friend. Welcome. Today is August 25th, 2022. Our devotional for today is titled, Why Pray? Our scripture reading is taken from John 15, verse 15. And it says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all the things that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this new day. Thank you because we're able to open our eyes and be able to breathe, to hear, to experience you in one way or another through our senses. Lord, perhaps we have difficulties going on in our lives, but even through these difficulties, we know that you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why pray? In his excellent book, Prayer, M.L. Andresen states that asking why we should pray is like asking why should we love or why should we breathe. One is necessary as the other. Where there is love, there is communion, and there is also prayer. I can't be any other way. Very well said. Where there is love, there is communion, and there is also prayer. With these words, the author is telling us that the main purpose of prayer is not to ask God to meet our needs, because He already does, since He is our Father. It is being in communion with Him. Then, why pray? Because we are friends of God. Andresen replies, And because there is nothing more holy than friendship that is built upon genuine love. And then he adds that the greatest joy of a friendship lies not in speaking, but of being together in communion. The following story, told by doctor and author Larry Dozy, illustrates this point well. Dr. Dozy says that one of his patients was dying of lung cancer. The day before his death, this man revealed that although he had never been a religious person, he had been praying frequently. And for what have you been praying, Dr. Dozy asked. For nothing in particular, the sick man replied. But if prayer is not to ask for something, the surprised doctor asked, then what is it for? The man thought for a moment and then replied, Prayer reminds me that I am not alone. The next day, this man died, but his words suggest that he had discovered that where there is love, there is communion, and there is also prayer. What does this mean in practical terms? It means, on the one hand, that we see prayer not as a duty, but as a privilege. How else can we describe these moments when we are with our friend and Savior? On the other hand, it means that in addition to our personal requests, which God already knows, we must use prayer to tell our best friend how grateful we are for all that he did to save us. Ellen G. White rightly states, Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Steps to Christ, chapter 11, page 93. As we meditate on today's devotional, let us have a word of prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for being our best friend. We know that no matter where we are or what our circumstances may be, we can talk to you. Thank you for your love. And Jesus, thank you for being our friend. In your name we pray. Amen. We're glad that you joined us today for the devotional. We pray that God blesses you, that his love embraces you, and that his presence is with you throughout this day. We'll see you again soon. Bye.